it's very interesting that minutes ago, I'm just from giving a test, it's not yet done, and then somebody posted on my, on my WhatsApp, one of the students, that um, he gave me an example, he was saying uh, the way biochemistry questions come. So he was saying, in class, you give an example, where you say, one plus three equals four. Then you give us homework to go and research on, which says three plus five plus two is equal to ten. And then when the exam comes, the questions are like, Arnold is moving. <laughs> Moving from home to school, he's 15 minutes late and the bus is nowhere to be seen. Calculate the weight of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I was thinking, this is crazy. How does this student write something like this to me? I love to doubt, but today, when I was giving the test, students were like, Sir, is this the sample question? Like, the weight of the sun is back again. All right. Um, anyway, guys, don't worry. I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. I'll be giving you a lot of sample questions, and we'll hope that we should get some of the questions from those. This morning, you and I are going to discuss the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain. And as we do that, we are also going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. So it's going to be the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. When you look at this, it's going to be more of a build up on what we had already discussed yesterday, which was on bioenergetics. So this morning, I want us to have an understanding of what the electron transport chain is all about. You see, from bioenergetics, we had learned that reduced equivalents, such as NADH plus H plus and FADH2, would actually be used to generate energy. We made it clear that, well, the oxygen you breathe in, 95% of the energy generated in the body is actually obtained from that oxygen you breathe. So you breathe in the oxygen, and this is what is used by the body to generate energy. All right? So how does that happen? Well, this happens by the following simple reaction. Hydrogen plus oxygen produces H2O. This is the reaction that leads to generation of energy. See? Pretty easy, right? In fact, you would be pleased to know that in the electron transport chain, this is what is going to happen. So at the end of the day, however mambo jumbo things become, just know this is what we are doing. Is that okay? This is what we are doing. We are getting the hydrogens, obtaining them from reduced mm. equivalents such as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in reduced form and the reduced flavin adenine dinucleotide. These are going to give the hydrogens which they are carrying to oxygen and produce water. This is the reason why yesterday we were saying that these are seemingly also amongst molecules you can call high energy molecules because they are highly reduced. And because they are reduced, they are going to be oxidized in the process, reduce oxygen and produce water. Written in that simple way, one might not really see how energy is going to be generated. But let me tell you, it's pretty easy. 
This is going to happen in the process of oxidation and reduction and lead to production of energy. But before I go into the details of how this is going to happen, I just want us to remind ourselves of the terms themselves, oxidation. Oxidation, reduction, oxidant, reductant, reducing agent, oxidizing agent. Let's define these terms first. Why? Because you are going to see that it is because of how these terms are actually defined that you will be able to generate your energy in the electron transport chain. So let's start by defining these terms. Elliot, where are you? Where's Elliot? Five. Four. Four. What's oxidation? Is what? An addition of oxygen. Correct. Oxidation is addition of oxygen. Okay. I've heard of another definition of oxidation. Do you want to give us? What's the other one? Uh, the removal of hydrogen. Okay. Correct. Removal of hydrogen is also oxidation. There's another one. Uh, what's your name again? Derek. Derek. Uh, I'll come to Derek on this one. This, this, yes. Oh, a loss of electrons. Is there another one? Yes, there is. What's the other? There. Increase in station state. Station state. <laughs> Guys, these are the definitions of oxidation. I'm pleased to tell you that where oxidation is occurring, reduction is also occurring. These occur simultaneously. And this is why these reactions are actually referred to as oxidation reduction reactions. It's also very interesting that you come to note that there are a family of enzymes or a class of enzymes that would catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. These are the class one enzymes, right? The oxidoreductases. Okay? So just to familiarize yourselves with this, I would recommend that you go and read about enzymes and how they are classified and named as well, just to remind yourselves. So there is a family of enzymes called oxidoreductases, and in this family you are going to meet a number of enzymes. Enzymes that are going to be called dehydrogenases. Some of them we called reductases. Others are going to be called catalases, myeloperoxidases, monooxygenases. Right? Peroxidases themselves. Those enzymes that are called that are actually in the family of oxidoreductases. And what are they doing? They are catalyzing oxidation reduction reactions. And because I'm talking to medical students, I would not waste the energy to define reduction. Or I'm going to say oxidation is the opposite of reduction. Which means that Everything here, make an opposite, and you will have defined reduction. Is that fair? <coughs> it's not fair. <laughs> All right, fine. So let, let's define an oxidant. What's an oxidant? What is an oxidant? What's an oxidant, guys? All right.
right? I'll go ahead and point us up. Yes. Thank you, Derek. Yes, I'm, I'm just trying. Yeah, you should. Yes. According to the weight, I think uh, an oxidant is a substance or uh, a species which undergoes oxidation. It's a species that undergoes oxidation. What do others think? An oxidant. Is it a new word? You heard about it, right? So what do you think it is? In the memory lane. <laughs> what do you think an oxidant is? Yes, what's the name again? Gideon. Yes, Gideon. The substance that removes electrons from another substance. And it sounds exactly the same as what Derek had said. Because if it removes electrons from another substance, itself, it actually becomes what? Reduced, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? <coughs> An oxidant. <coughs> Any other oxidant, guys? <coughs> uh, in my years of lecturing, guys, I have actually learned not to be intimidated by science. So I'll wait for you. <laughs> okay, so what do others think? Yes. What do you think? Oxidant. From the word. Yeah? From the word. Oxidant. I'm hearing somebody saying something correct from this side. <laughs> But they are too shy to bring it out. You said an oxidant is a what? And I said it's correct, and I'm serious. An oxidant is a what? Yes? An oxidant is a substance that is stable in other substances or Correct. So I heard you. So an oxidant is an oxidizing agent. So just in case you are thinking these two are different, correct that. An oxidant is an oxidizing agent and it's a, it's a substance that oxidizes another substance. It's a substance that leads to oxidation. Is that clear? So the substance that leads to this is an oxidant. It will lead to removal of hydrogen. Lead to a loss of electrons lead to an increase in atomic number, lead to the addition of oxygen. So an oxidant at the end of the day will become reduced. Is that clear? Now, bearing this in mind, I want to tell you that when you come to the electron transport chain, you would see most of these kinds of reactions, oxidation, reaction. For instance, you would see that hydrogens are going to be given off in different ways. They will be given off as protons, for example, hydride ions, and as atoms at some point. Later on, you would see the hydrogens being able to be transferred as electrons because it will lead to an inc a reduction in oxidation number of some of the species that you get to see. This, in a nutshell, should be in your background as we come to discuss the electron transport chain. Before I delve into the details now, I would also want to put another thing in your background where electron transport chain is going to happen. It's going to happen in, yes? In the 